I'm not here to let you feel that I have it all sorted out, mm. right? But that thing that I know and I know right. for sure, mm. oh my God, <laughs> you're going to love it, right? Indeed. And you would, you would, you would, you would get it. Right. right. So if it's just, if it's just A that I know, mm -hmm. and I know other people don't even know A, mm -hmm. right. you're going to hear from me. You right. hear the A, you know, we all, 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 all drum it, you right. know. Oh, what a big mistake. Mm -hmm. Hello, people. Welcome to another episode of How It Started. On today's episode, we'll be asking the question, how prepared are you for the job market? With me in studio today, we have a career resource person who is going to help us answer these questions. We have all the resources, we have all the exposure to be able to get a career that we are happy about. We should be able to get to the point where we really control the shots, in the sense that we are doing things that we love. Do you understand? Yeah. So you should find a career that you love doing right a career that the world needs and that's what talks about the, the question i asked you what problem am i here to solve right a career that you are great at it you understand so that if anyone is looking for someone who takes good pictures they know that call it here hello kia hi Kwame. thank you very much for this <laughs> it's support. good 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 to see you um let's get right in tell tell us a little bit about yourself all right, sure. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Ekia from Poma Ampa, and I am an early career development consultant. Okay. And what basically I'm passionate about is helping young people prepare for the world of work. Right? Right. I believe that um, if young people get the early support, mm -hmm. they will be able to be successful in whatever they decide to do. Yeah in terms of their careers. Right, yeah. right. I mean, I, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, I, believe, I believe strongly about the fact that a lot of, you know, would-be graduates need information about what the, the market needs from them. Mm -hmm. um, I, I especially like the aspects of, you know, preparing them, preparing them, giving them tips as to what it means to be confident, how to articulate yourself, how to sell yourself in the market space. And it's something that actually, you know, piqued my interest when I saw the virtual career office. Yeah. Tell us what that is about. Right. So the virtual career office um, just exists to support young people, like mm. I said, with their mm. early career development. Okay. So right from career guidance mm -hmm. to um, prepping them for jobs mm -hmm. um, to really anything that has to do with their careers right mm -hmm. um so if we we believe that if they get the support early mm -hmm. then they can avoid some mistakes mm -hmm. that maybe their predecessors made mm -hmm. or they can actually make confident or informed decisions so mm -hmm. the virtual career office really what we do is we um, share content on career related mm -hmm. um, stuff right? okay so right from blogging mm -hmm. Um, connecting with industry professionals mm -hmm. to also share their career journey with young people okay. um, to connecting them with opportunities mm -hmm. that uh, maybe can help them with um, their career planning so for example um, internships uh, mentors and, and all that so basically it's just a place where anything that has to do with your career development mm -hmm. as a student a recent graduate or someone who is a young professional you just like Working virtually, like we always see, mm. and then just engage with us on mm. any of the um, services that you want um, us to help you out with. Yeah. Mm. Really, really, really interesting. Um, I want, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking now, um, what, what made you come up with this? I mean, I get the aspect of, um, you know, putting together an outfit where people can walk in, try and get information about their careers, etc. Um, and I know I know some schools also provide that sort of um, information to their students. Um, what made what made you come out with this? Because I don't think I have really heard about anything specific, you know, in that in that direction. What, what made you come up with that? Right. So I would say that it's my way of um, paying for it. I would mm. say mm. I was privileged to go to. Um, a university that um, had a well-structured career guidance center yeah. where you could just walk in and talk to the professionals there about mm -hmm. your career. Mm -hmm. they, could, they, would, they would help you 
um, charts your career path, mm -hmm. um, connect you to opportunities that can help you mm -hmm. enhance your, your career development. And I think for me, I came out of, uh, of, of that university or I came out of school and I realized that that opportunity was just um, exclusive to us mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. wasn't the norm, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it was a shocker for me because mm -hmm. I thought I, it was something that everybody in, in Ghana or if you went to um, any university, you would mm -hmm. get that um, need, that need um, or opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I realized that that wasn't um, the case, right? right? So for me, I then that's, that actually made me curious and interested in um, giving back to my community or young people. Mm -hmm. And I felt that this um, opportunity or this service or services shouldn't be just available to select few. Mm -hmm. I feel that it's supposed to be a, it's a fundamental thing. It's something that it's just, I feel like it's just like, needing water and air mm. right you mm. need like some career guidance um, or career support mm -hmm. to be able to be successful in whatever you want to do so if mm. you don't have that or mm. that is taken away from mm. you then my question is how are you going to survive right mm. how are you going to make the right career uh, decisions mm. how are you going to find opportunities how are you able to even know what industry needs or even if you want to go into entrepreneurship mm. do you even have the skills to you know get there right. so these are some of the things i started thinking about and i, f I was looking for ways that i could give back mm. and i will say paid for it right and so i started thinking about um um ways I can engage people who mm. may not have that advantage that I had, mm. right? And so I think the first thing that I started doing was blogging. So I started mm. just blogging. Um, I started um, things that I knew from from school. Mm -hmm. I would just blog uh, blog about it and just help people and all that. And I, I got the opportunity to um, actually work in a university to okay. actually and be part of their career um, services office, mm. right? And so I think that also helped me, mm. right? So I, I got to really understand um, my target audience as a student and mm. all that. And I think that was where I think for me, that passion really was, um, I guess I'll say it was in my face, mm. right? Because then I realized, oh, wow, I really need, need, I need to right. do a lot and, and all that. And so that's how it really started. Mm. And so I would blog some of the questions or the issues that students came to me with. Mm. And then I'll blog about it and share my, my, my thoughts or give tips, advice and all that. And I share with anyone really who, who, would, who may be um, who may benefit from, right. from, from from that and that's how it really started and then it became um, to where it is now, to huh? where it is now so, yeah. I see it. I see it. Um, I mean we hear we constantly hear about the fact that Africa for for for, for example has a really you know the, the youth population in Africa is really growing it's, and it's actually large we form a large chunk of the population across sport in Africa and you know specifically with the different countries we hear things about you know the huge rising unemployment and all of that and i i strongly believe that um aside the fact that maybe there may not be enough jobs i think that's one aspect that would you know allow graduates or young professionals to put their best foot forward is getting the right information skills yeah, yeah. employability the, skills yeah. exactly the the getting the right skills and information, information yeah. to be able to if you if as it were you know separate yourself yeah. from the rest yeah. or navigate the career path indeed that you want to, yeah. indeed because because the truth is you know in the marketplace it's it's all about what value are you bringing, bringing exactly. you know and and so if there are so many people you need to find a way to be able to separate yourself yeah. from the others and yeah. I think it's something that helps with you know um, getting your foot in the door one and then two um, there's the aspect of um, career progression you know getting into the the career that you're interested in figuring out how it is that you know you're going to move you know effectively and and and, and smartly in order to get that sort of outcome that you want and i i i really i i really see how important your offices you know i checked out your blog i checked out your um, 
the office that you're putting together. I, I contacted a few people who have you know attended your um, office and they've been singing high praises. You know, um, quickly, what would you say are some of the are some of the downsides? By downsides, I mean what are some of the quote unquote bad things young graduates um people young um, um people in car in their careers are doing wrong that is you know not making them attractive you know to the marketplace despite the fact that they might be skilled right yeah if you I mean, can when list you say, a few. i mean when you say young people i would say that i'm, I'm actually one of them so <laughs> you say young people and then what you are doing wrong i'm like what am i doing okay let me let me, let me. no no i really okay, get it I, okay, I, I, right. i'm just trying okay. to i'm just pulling your legs mm. really um, I think that from experience, I mean, what, what I do, I think some of the mistakes the young people are doing, mm -hmm. I would say one will be they are not being intentional about mm -hmm. planning their careers, mm -hmm. right? It's mm -hmm. more like they feel somebody needs to help them. Mm -hmm help them get see, a job or help them um, with opportunities, mm. right? That's mm. a mistake I feel young people are doing. Mm. Young people are not taking charge of their careers, mm. right? Mm. So by, by that I mean that how many young people are actually sitting down to say, you know what, I may not have maybe this service or services in my in, in my school mm -hmm. or even I'm out of school. I mm -hmm. don't have anyone to talk to mm -hmm. about my career or whatever. Mm -hmm. But what am I doing for myself mm -hmm. with regards to planning or taking charge of mm -hmm. it, right? Mm -hmm. Am I, um, have I sat down to look at opportunities that mm -hmm. exist in the area that I'm interested in? Right. Have I connected with people who are already in industry and I think I can, men who can mentor me mm -hmm. or I can shadow? Mm -hmm. um, have I um, signed on to, say, um, platforms that I can learn mm. from people, mm. you know, and all the resources mm. and everything. Mm. So I think, I think young people have their priorities quite, you know. Twisted, if you like. Yeah, right. the, the, the priorities mm. would be. Mm. Yeah. So because when it comes to other things, mm -hmm. you can tell that they are very, you know. Intentional about yeah, it. Yeah, mm. proactive mm. and everything. Anything apart from their careers, mm. they are very proactive. Mm. But when it comes to their careers, they feel like somebody needs to sort me out with mm. that. Mm. So I think that's one of the things that I feel young people are doing. Mm. Um, I also think that young people, again, are not planning their careers early. Mm. Right? Mm. So it would come under you maybe um, owning your career journey, right? right? So that would be young people are not um, planning their careers mm -hmm. early, right? Yeah. So when I say early, when you're in your university, some people feel that they have to start thinking about their careers when they exit mm. or they transition to mm. the world of work. Right. But then they forget that you need to have something mm -hmm. to be able to be attractive to Indeed. a potential employer or yes. even want to start your own mm. business, right? Mm. Because when it comes to starting even your own business, you still need, need some skills. Yes. And these skills that you need to get a job mm -hmm. are the same skills you need to even start your own business. Mm. And that's what people feel to um, um, understand mm. because if, for example, an employer needs someone who has great communication, leadership, interpersonal skills, who is um, proactive and all that, you still need that for your business mm. because you need to have good communication skills to be able to articulate or talk to people about your business idea. Right. You still need leadership skills to be able to even manage your own business and mm. even the people you'll be hiring mm. you know you still need great interpersonal skills to even sustain or maintain you know or establish relationships right, right? to to get customers for Indeed. your business and all mm. that so when it comes to whether or not you're going to work in a corporate environment or you want to start your own business neither here nor there mm. really mm. it is what have you done for yourself in terms of building capacity building right. yourself for whatever you want to do so after school you can decide to either go into entrepreneurship or you want to start your own business mm. that's really up to you yeah. right and so that's what i think young people are not really doing they are not um they are not um planning their careers any mm. they wait when they transition that's when they start thinking about mm. their career like, mm. oh 
because what do I even want to do? Mm. Right? But right from freshman year mm -hmm. or first year, mm. you need to start planning for your career, mm. start um, um, thinking about possible internships, start thinking about people in industry you can you want to start connecting with. Right. You know, all these things will come together mm -hmm. to um, make you successful when you graduate right. or you transition, mm -hmm. right, and all that. Not after, and then you're now looking for people mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all that. Because mm -hmm. when you're in school and you're planning and everything, you can make your mistakes, mm -hmm. you can um, you can use that that period to discover yourself. And even in discovering yourself, you get to even know um, the things that you are interested in or you are passionate about, mm -hmm. and then you can look for opportunities that would help you maybe, um, you know, apply yourself mm -hmm. you know, and all that. And that mm -hmm. can be your career and all mm -hmm. that. So I think if you talk about the mistakes that people are doing, I will, I will, just, I will just narrow it down to these two right. As in, uh, young people are not owning their career for mm -hmm. them. They've actually left it for people to, mm -hmm. to, to sort it out for mm -hmm. them, really. Mm -hmm. And the young people are also not um, planning their careers early. Mm -hmm. you know, so I would say these two things. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I mean, I, I, I agree. I agree with you 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I think taking, taking ownership of the fact that you, know, you want to enter into the career marketplace or the marketplace requires you to be, um, to be intentional. You, you have to be intentional because whether we like it or not, the space is very competitive yeah. and you need to find a way to stand out from the rest. Yeah. Um, so with this, with this uh, VCO, Virtual Career Office, um, how would you say the market has received it so far? So, so far, I'm actually overwhelmed. Indeed. Yeah, yeah. I, you can actually tell that people need mm. this um, service or guidance, mm. right? Um, I think for me, till date, I still feel that it's just something little I'm doing, mm. but then I feel that l that little thing I'm doing is actually impacting life, Indeed. right, and all that. So I feel my, I would say my target audience mm -hmm. have really, um, maybe the word would be, not to say accepted, but then, I, I mean, find it useful, mm. find what I'm doing useful right. until then they engage mm. me and all that. And of course it has its own challenges and all that. I mean, right. And then all that because then you are you are your office is kind of helping people mm -hmm. who need it. But then of course, then you sit and ask yourself, do these people actually need this? Mm. Because of maybe some of some of the things that I mean, you know, priority right. and, and all that. Mm. But then I feel like and the people that I, I I'm or this office is, is helping or supporting mm -hmm. are finding it quite useful. Mm. And so yeah. So, yeah. so, I mean, overall, you see the reception is, is, is great. It's yeah. been great so okay, far. Yeah, but of course, we can we can reach out to more people. Mm -hmm. But then so far, I mean, I believe in starting small or mm -hmm. little, whatever you mm -hmm. have. So um, I feel that when, where we are right now, mm -hmm. it's, it's good. But definitely we can do better. Can do much more. Yeah, but right. I also believe in rather not just... I'm focusing on numbers, mm. right? Just like mm. getting up and just like, I want to get a numbers, numbers, mm. numbers. No, mm. but if it's just like even five people that you can reach out to mm. and you feel like it was impactful, yeah. for me, that's that's how I will measure success mm. than numbers. Mm. It's more like impact than just numbers. Mm. Yeah. I, I, remember, I remember mentioning to another, um, somebody I interviewed earlier, we were talking about, I mentioned this uh, very renowned marketer. His name is Seth Golden. And he was talking about how, you know, um, service providers, brands, etc., need to be able to focus on the people that they have in front of them. So if it's one person that you have in front, of, do well to make sure you deliver the best yeah. quality possible. Yeah. They will speak for you. Exactly. They, 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 so your customers actually are your marketing right. Yeah, right. Uh, professionals also, or, or marketing executives, Indeed. right? Indeed. If you get it twisted uh, or you mess it up, they mm. would also, mm. you know, and all that. Mm. I mean, I won't say that I've, I've, I've had it 100% or I have um, done a great job at every uh, meetings mm -hmm. or every interactions okay. I've had with people, mm -hmm. right? But I know for sure that I'm also aware of um, 
giving people a good experience mm. and then making sure that it's impact impact for me mm. if, if i if i'm going to do something and i can't measure impact i don't see how impactful it's going to be mm. for people or a young person or whatever you really want to find me engaging mm. and all that mm. kind of stuff yeah interesting i like that impact impact mm. <laughs> that sounds that sounds really good and um, so i mean moving on from that so aside i mean you may, i know you mentioned that um you know the people that you deal with the people that you do maybe possibly one-on-ones with etc are the people who are your potential marketing executives and i, and I, I agree with that 100 percent. but what other ways are you um advertising yourself because you know in the marketplace people people have issues people are looking for information to solve their problems so how are you advertising the virtual career office you know to get more people who I know will be interested in this. 